Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. So give me dove's eyes. Woo. So give me dove's eyes. So that I can see you, Jesus. Give me dove's eyes. Like a dove brought the branch of the anointing. Give me dove's eyes. So I can see Jesus. Give me dove's eyes. Give me dove's eyes. So I can recognize your anointing. Give me dove's eyes. So I will know that your presence is among us, dove's eyes. So I will know when your majesty is here. That's what we need in the body of Christ. That's what we need in the body of Christ. We need dove's eyes. We need dove's eyes. I don't want to talk about you Like you're not in this room I want to look right at you I want to sing right to you Ooh. Somebody need to just throw your hands up. Worship it. Dove's eyes. Dove's eyes. If we don't have that, we can't see him. The Bible said it after Jesus came up out of the water. The heavens opened up. And the Spirit of the Lord descended down upon him like a dove. But the dove had to have dove's eyes. Hey, give me dove's eyes. Woo! Give me dove's eyes. Give me dove's eyes. We can see you in everything. Give me those eyes. Give me those eyes. Cause I don't wanna talk about you like you're not in this room. I want to look right at you. I want to sing right to you. I don't want to talk about you like you're not in this room. I want to look right at him. I want to sing right While your hands are up, I can tell you now that this is, this is a lot of what 5 a.m. prayer is going to be about. Because we don't want to talk about him and act like he's not in this room. I'm tired of looking at people. I want to look right at him. I want to sing right to you, Jesus. I don't want to talk about you. Like you're not sitting in this room. I want to live so I can look right at you. I don't have to cover my face. I want to sing right to you. I 
I believe if somebody would just worship him for the next 30 seconds, he'll put us in an open heaven. He'll put us in an open heaven. If I can just get somebody to start worshiping him, he'll put us in an open heaven. Come on, if I can get somebody to start worshiping him. Oh, yes. Oh, how I love you, sweet Jesus. You're in this room. Oh, you're in this room. You're in this room. Your presence is in this room. Your glory is in this room. Oh, you're in this room. You're in this room. You're in this room. Your presence is all around us. We don't want to talk about you more like you're not in the room. We want to look like it. We really want to sing to you too. It's not about us. It's not about what we need from him. This moment belongs to him. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. This moment belongs to him. He's asking our permission to take this moment. Oh yeah. Everything you need, 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 everything you need. is standing in the divine. Jesus, your glory, Jesus, 
Some of y'all even thinking about what I'm just saying. He's the master of everything. So what is there to worry about? He is the master of everything. 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 Your king. Our king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of my soul, I give you words. In the bottom of my soul, I give you words. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, you may be seated in His presence if you can. Shabbosite. Oh, if you can, sit down. If you can. Worship in the morning, I will. If you say worship in the noonday, I will. If you say worship in the midnight hour, I will. I will. Anything for you, my king. Oh, I'm not a mess. 
Bless his high name. For the Lord has done great and marvelous things. Whereas we are ecstatic about Jesus, about my Jesus. He my Jesus. He my Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He my Jesus. He's the one that saves for real. He's the one that delivers for real. He's the one that make whole for real. My Jesus. My Jesus. <laughs> Pastor Board, I found Jesus. I found Jesus. I found Jesus. I found the real Jesus. I found Jesus. I found Jesus. I found Jesus. I found Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay back. Yeah. I know the music's playing, but I just hear this. Keep going. Jesus saves oh to the utmost. Jesus saves. He will pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah. My Jesus saves. To the utmost, my Jesus says. To the utmost, my Jesus says. He did pick me up and he turned me around. I said, My Jesus To the utmost, my Jesus saves. To the utmost, my Jesus saves. He will pick you up and turn you around. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah. 
Cause my Jesus say Just tell yourself that right quick. He loves me. He loves me. That's what I found out. Found out, Jesus says. might be sitting next to somebody tonight and I was going to I didn't know how I was going to incorporate what God was saying to me and I just did what I always do I just said where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him. Oh. You know, a yielded man can only sing that song. 
through the valley. Eroroshe, I'll go with you <laughs> through the valley. trying to incorporate this tonight but something came back to my spirit on my way here in the limousine and I was riding on the same seat that Pastor Boyd rides on and just the presence of worship came over me in that car and my spirit I want you to hear this my spirit began to battle a little bit because I know many people don't want worship and I said God what am I going to do because church people don't want worship. The religious institution don't want worship. And the reason why the enemy don't want us to have worship is because worship returns us back to our original selves. Worship causes you to throw every other idol off of your back. Worship causes you to begin to cast down what you know ain't you. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. Worship takes you to a place. Worship takes you to a place where you begin to give God the yes that he's been waiting on. I hear the Lord said, I've been waiting on it. I hear the Lord said, I've been waiting on it. One more, one more thing that it does, Pastor Boy. And I studied this. It said 77% of the people that attend organized services do not get what they are looking for watch this from God in their worship services because God is not the beneficiary of your praise we praise him because we want something we praise him because we want him to do something but he's not the beneficiary which means when I open up my mouth I don't want nothing when I run around the church I'm not doing it because I want you to heal something no I want the I want you God to be the beneficiary of my praise and he said and that's why worship is selective that's why that's why people praise him when they feel like it and they praise him when they don't because if I'm not looking for a benefit then I don't have a praise I don't think y'all then I don't and when I had my personal experience with this it brings you to a place in God where you tell the Lord if you don't want to fix it you don't have to what I want you to do is anoint me to praise you 
I'm not hearing nobody because no, we're not hearing a whole lot of people right there. No, no, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not. No, 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 we're not hearing a whole lot of people praise God right there. Because, because to us, if God don't work it out, he ain't God. If God don't give you a car, he ain't God. If God let him take your house, he ain't God. <laughs> if God still had the cancer in your body, he ain't God. But he told me I'm God. I'm God if I don't never heal you, I'm still God. I'm God if I leave you in a shelter for the rest of your life, I'm still God. So well, what are you talking about God? Because I'm looking for somebody that would make me the beneficiary of their praise, not what they want from me. I ran across a scripture. I ran across a scripture. This is the scripture that changed my life. This is the scripture, it's the Tanya that changed my life. You sitting next to somebody right now, and we're gonna stay right here. We're gonna stay right here because I know what he's sending me. I know what he's sending me back to Bethel for. No, we're gonna stay right here. We're gonna stay right here till all the little gods die. We're going to stay right here, Sister Tanya, until all the idols die. We're going to stay right here until everybody alive. I'm not hearing nobody talk about to me. We're going to stay right here until every preacher, everybody. Everybody, go back to your first praise. Go back go back to the way you was when you first got saved. No, we're going to stay right here. We're going to stay right here until we get a David anointed. Well, the Bible said even though he was a king, he danced out of his clothes because he recognized the glory has returned. You better open your mouth and give God a shout out of your spirit. You better shout in your house. I don't care where you are. I said the glory is here. I said the glory is here. I said the glory. I said the glory. I said the glory. glory. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. He don't want, he don't want, he don't want us to, he don't want us to get the glory because the glory is a revealer. The glory, Jerry, is a revealer. It's a revealer of the truth. It's a revealer. It's the spirit that tells you that the devil ain't gonna take you to the pit. It's the spirit that tells you that bondage ain't gonna hold you captive and you are gonna be released to do everything that God's called you to do. You better open your mouth. No real worship. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Go by Shaya. And God spoke to me. He spoke to me and said, the first 25 years of your ministry, you was the people's prophet, but you my prophet this time. And so I came back up from what he's saying. Ain't no way in the world you can be in the choir and you're not an erratic praiser. There is no way you can be on the musicians, on keyboards, and you're not an erratic praiser. Who am I talking to? How can you be on the praise team and sit with your legs crossed and it's time to praise the Lord. I'm not giving nobody talk. You better open up your mouth. You better open up your mouth. Let me 
tell you what happens. Let me tell you what happens. Let me tell you what happens. Let me tell you what happens. And anybody get mad, get mad with God. But there is no way in the world that people come to the house of God and they don't even know. The Bible said they arose a generation that knew not the Lord. When I look around this auditorium, I'm looking at people that don't know nothing about our belly praise. They don't even know how to praise Him. And when they look up at what's supposed to be, the way you teach me how to praise God, y'all got your Bibles in your lap. Y'all looking all important. Y'all looking like y'all somebody when you are teachers of the glory. When you are teachers of the anointing, you ought to show the people that this is how you praise them. You shout out of your belly. You lift your hands up. You give God glory until you fall out of your seat. Somebody give God a shout. I keep hearing, I keep hearing the Lord, I keep hearing the Lord, I keep hearing the Lord say set the captive free. I keep hearing the Lord say set the captive free. I keep hearing the Lord say set the captive free. If you're in this building and you want to learn how to give God a real praise, get out of your aisle, get into the aisle and start hollering because I feel God saying, I'm about to break you free. I give the Lord saying, I'm about to do it inside of you again. Somebody shout. Something is breaking. Something is breaking. Something is breaking. The Bible said. The Bible said when Jacob got confused and didn't know who he was, the Bible said that he took him to the place of Bethel and he went to sleep. And there were angels ascending and descending. And God was standing looking up and I hear the Lord saying that the angels of the Lord has been released in this house. You better shout because God, he gonna breath your praise. It's a birthing. Wait a minute, it's a birthday. It's a birthday. It's a birthday. It's a birthday. And I'm not going away. It's a birthday. And I'm not going away. It's a birthing, Sister Tanya. I'm not a visiting preacher. I'm not going nowhere. Every time I come back, I'm going to say the same thing. It's time to praise him out of your spirit. It's time to yell out of your belly. Somebody shut right now. Hold on. Stop the music. Stop the music. I want all the ushers to get out of the way. Let the people come. What we blocking the people for? Let the people come. You want to come to this altar? You come to the altar. And that's what the problem is. It's time to go back to the old landmark. It's time to go back to cry loud. It's time to go back to giving God your praise. Wait a minute. He said, he said worship. No, he said, wait a minute. Everybody down here, everybody down here, don't cover your face, look up. Everybody down here, get your hands up. It ain't no more bearing in your face. Tell the Lord it's me, it's me Jesus. I'm standing in the need of a breakthrough. It's me oh Lord, I gotta learn how to worship you. I need you to breath me out, breath me out so that I worship you. And the 
middle of the night. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. He doing it. He doing it. Shut up, say. Shut up. He doing it. Show up, say. Help us, say. Put it down. Give us a new baptism. Give us a new fire. God, I want a new fire. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. Don't pass me back. Even on my children. Baptize them again. Hold my shot. Somebody shout. 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 That's what I mean. Shout. Because there's something in your shout tonight. Shout. There's power. In your shout tonight, shout because the enemy, he gotta let you go. Somebody shout, oh, 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 do it in the God, do it in the God, oh, give it to him, give it to him, give it to him, give him your praise. Give him your praise. Give him your worship. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. All over the building. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. I'll show ya. I hear a sound. 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 I hear a sound of the abundance of rain. I hear a sound. I hear a sound. I hear a sound of the abundance of rain. I hear a sound. It's coming. The latter rain shall be greater. You gotta shout! You gotta shout! You gotta shout! The scripture 
say. The scripture say. Hold on. The scripture say. The scripture said this for real. Hero Shande. Harabo Shaya. Hobi Ashaya. He cast your behave in second chronicles he shabaha the scripture said that when you see a chance for freedom take it what am i trying to say to y'all if you do what god has given me your life ain't gonna never be the same i hear the holy ghost saying this very night the realm of the supernatural it's falling in this building and you shall never be the same again. He said, Shout. He said, Shout. Why do we have to shout like that? Why? Why do I have to shout like that? What sense does it make? The Holy Ghost said, Pastor, he said, I want your spirits to record this sound. I want this sound to be programmed in your spirit. And the next time the devil tell you what you ain't gonna be, I hear the Holy Ghost saying that this very shout it's going to come up out of your belly and no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. You better start just Not this time. Not this time. Touch your neighbor and say, not this time. Not this time. Tell them, I can't not shout. Not this time. I can't not give him glory. Not this time. Because I believe the gates of hell. No, when I get through shouting the night, the Lord's going to restore me. The Lord's going to put me back where I was in my prayer life. He's going to put me back where I was in my consecration. He gon' put me back in my mind. He gon' put me back in my spirit. Now shout, shout, shout. Secret. Let me give you a secret. Let me give you a secret. He trying. I see him in the spirit. I've seen him all day in my spirit. All day long in my spirit. I've been walking back and forth in the house and I keep seeing it. I keep seeing it. I keep seeing the spirit that's trying to muscle her. The mouth of the deliverer. I keep seeing it. I keep seeing the spirit that wants us to act like we some dignified church. But I hear the Lord saying that this place is a place of deliverance. I hear the Lord saying if you don't deliver, you won't be nothing. I'm not hearing you talk to me. You better open up your mouth. He spoke something to me. He spoke something to me about you. About you, Pastor. And he said, for more, for more than 38 some odd years, plus, plus, 
plus the Lord has always had you moving in deliverance the Bible said that when Ruth came to Sarah the Lord told me to speak this word to you tonight he said when Ruth came to Sarah Sarah when when, when Sarah came uh, Ruth came to Naomi he said Naomi wasn't a Bible scholar Hold on, shut down. The Bible, hold it, be I see. The Holy Ghost told me to tell you, don't even try too hard in this season. He said, because the power to deliver is in the waving of your hands. He said, the power to deliver is just by you walking in the building. And God, if you lay down on the floor, then it's already over. I hear the Lord saying that your latter days shall be fewer words, but a greater anointing. Somebody give God a shout. said Ruth went to Naomi y'all get this Ruth went to Naomi Jerry maybe somebody don't understand so I talked to you Jerry Ruth went to Naomi and when she got there pastor what caused Ruth to walk in the millions what caused her posterity to change what got her ready for Jesus' lineage to come through her this is what God told me he said what God already was three words of instructions not a Bible lesson three words wash change your clothes and get anointed those three words wash clean and get anointed if you want to know why I came back to this church because all I need is to hear pastor say wash change your clothes and get the anointed on your life everybody in here you better stop praising God like I gotta have the anointed I gotta wash I gotta change I gotta get on saying right now what am I saying right now when he said change change your clothes when he said change your clothes don't believe him don't believe him young man don't believe don't believe that cuz when the Holy sees a difference then when people say the Lord gonna change you then when the Lord say change when the Lord says change it he speaks it under the power of the Holy Ghost uh, everything about your life changes and I'm here to tell you right now uh, standing in this building uh, with a fresh wind coming on your life uh, with the Holy Ghost said change uh, tonight ain't nothing about you gonna be the same uh, say, uh, oh somebody get God uh, no y'all not no y'all ain't praising it I'm not hearing you. I get the Lord said, shut your eyes to people. Shut your eyes to the atmosphere. Shut your ears to darkness and change your clothes. Wash it. Get anointed. It's time. Just step over in your old destiny. You gotta stop praising God. Let me help you. Let me 
finna help you before we, before we go. I'm finna help you. I'm finna help. I'm finna help Pastor train you right now. Right now. This gonna be your first lesson. I want you, when I count to three, I want you to start looking around. All around you. All right? Now I'm gonna tell you what you're looking for. Everybody that you see giving God one of these kind of praise. Ignore them. Because they dried up in religious. They done lost their praise and their victory. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Anybody that you look around and see praising God like this, thank you, Jesus. You pay attention to that. Because that's somebody that feels what you feel. That's somebody that says, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. You gotta praise him because you can be in church for 20 years and lose the glory. You gotta praise him because you can be in church all of your life and don't have the anointing. You gotta praise him because you can be like Samson. You can shake and ain't nothing there. I said praise him. I don't give him glory. Come on, Kippy! 
people. Come on here, people. Oh, Zion, where is your praise? Oh, Zion, where is your strength? Oh, Zion, put on your praise. Oh, Zion, put on your war clothes. Oh, Zion, put on your prayer clothes. Oh, Zion, put on your worship clothes. Zion, Zion, the Spirit is calling you. Zion, the Spirit is calling you. Zion. Somebody think I'm playing. Somebody think I'm playing. But the Lord just spoke to me and said, I'm giving everybody in this building back your original praise. I hear the Lord saying, I'm giving it back to you. The praise you used to have when you weren't thinking about what nobody said. Yes,
And it is so, said the Lord. And it is so, said the Lord. Nothing shall ever be the same again. Somebody give him a shot. your neighbor I don't do the touch your neighbor I don't do that no more unless the Lord tell me to do it I don't do it because the people in the church do it when the Lord tell me to tell the people to touch your neighbor it's because the Spirit of God wants to prophesy it's not it's not a churchy thing but the Lord said tonight he wants to use your mouth to speak power over you he said turn around and grab three people and tell them what God has birthed in me this night, I'm not going back ever again. Touch three people and tell them when you get to the third person, you break out and go to giving God a prayer. Because he said, oh, that about you. What God has birthed in me tonight, I'm not going back. What God has birthed in me tonight, I'm not going back. Reach up and touch somebody's hand. Reach up and grab somebody's hand. And just stop worshiping God, telling him how much you love him.
Somebody lift your hands up and wave him in his presence. The Bible said, and when I come back, maybe I can preach this. It said, in that place of struggle, that when Jacob laid his head down, the Bible said he used a brick for his pillow. Which means your hard place is your place of comfort in God. Oh, that I shall. And until you have, until you have nights of hard sleep, you will never see angels ascending in these cities. You will never see God standing at the top of the ladder ready to change your destiny. You will never see God and what he wants right now out of everybody in here. And some of you all, even if you don't understand it, I know somebody that know God. Just do it because that's what God is telling me to tell you to do. He said right now, lift your hands up and worship him in a hard place. He said, I want you to think about some things you're going through and choose to worship him anyway. Come on.
Hobasaya. One word can change our lives forever. As long as you're in the land of the living, one word can change our lives. As long as you are in the land of the living, one word. You can step to this pulpit and say, God said, peace. And that's the word. For the oxygen. Power of greater anointing upon you than ever before. You go into a one word anointing. If you said done, that's it. So that I say, I do what he say. I do what he say. His presence is so awesome in this place. I came in this place, and every time I enter into the house of the Lord. You're gonna ask some of my people, they in here. I praise God harder than my church. Cause I walk in church with a man already set to make God the beneficiary of my praise. Somebody lift your hands. anybody in here used to be in real bondage. I'm not talking about somebody hurt your feelings. I'm talking about real bondage and didn't think you was going to ever make it out. That them the people I'm talking to that need to praise God right now. Jesus, I'll never forget. service even if I didn't preach I look just like this don't I Jerry even when I don't preach I look just like this leaving church I praise him harder than anybody in the church I think because I made a vow to him that he was going to be the beneficiary of my praise I made a vow to him that I wouldn't even wear nothing that I couldn't make him the beneficiary of my praise. I came to church prepared. That's why I wear shoes in the church now. And then I bring socks. Because I don't even want my shoes to get in the way of my praise. He's been too good to me. And he's saying, set a captive free you know what it feels like to be bound you know what it feels like to want to praise him and can't 
You know what it feels like to want a breakthrough and can't get one. You know what it feels like to, to walk in the realm of a promise of a breakthrough. But you walk in the service wondering, is this going to be the service that it happens? He said, then don't ever do that to the people of God. Don't ever let them walk in a place where I'm sending you. And they got to wonder, is this going to be the place that God is going to send me free? How old shit did they say? Whom the sun sets free. It's free indeed. All over this building. When God told me to speak. When he said, come back to Bethel. I was telling them last night, upstairs, pastor. They said, well, how you, how you think you're going, how you think you're going to do that? How you think you're going to come to Bethel and pastor the church? I said, you don't understand, I'll shut that church down for I'd not come back. Ain't no choice. Now, we're going to try to make it work. But it'll be to the disadvantage of the people on the side. Because I know where my place of blessing is. Have you ever heard of people in the, have you heard of them people in the newspaper? Elder boy, where people say they loves one died and they wouldn't let the people come in there to get the body. That'd be me. They'd be like, I'm just waiting on Pastor Boyd to say one more thing before y'all start trying to embalm him. Just, cause you don't know. You don't know because sometimes you can be around the anointing and take it for granted. You don't know because sometimes you can be around the anointed and say, well, he take too long to say stuff. But he has years worth of God on the inside that he can just look at you and just wave his hands. He can just point in your direction and keep walking and drive demons out. I don't think y'all know that around the world the anointing is scarce. All right. All right, you better, you better tell these people. Around the world, the anointing is scarce. Around the world, you can't hardly find nobody that's a senior in God and God still has a hook in them. I'm sorry, you, you can play with yourself if you want to, but this is rare. I done been all over the world. And the Bible said, Somebody said we done went through a lot. But Job 33 says, God does this to a man twice and even three times. That the Lord may deliver his life from destruction. And when the Lord takes us to hard places, that's what made me praise God. Because the Lord said to me, this is not the devil. This is me saving your life from destruction. You better give God a praise. You better... Anybody in this building right now, if you're going through a hard place, you better give God a praise because that ain't the devil. Elder Boyd, Elder Boyd, I'm going to give these people the word that God gave me. He said, when I stood in the midst of the hardest trial of my life what turned my heart toward God to love him in the midst of it all he said to me Juanita you're not being attacked you're being considered he said I said to the devil have you considered my servant Job the Lord said to me pastor I'm confident and what I put in you and I'm confident in who I called you to be. And I said to the devil, have you considered her? And when I knew that it was just a consideration. When I knew that it was just a consideration, I knew then that there was an exit date. And I began to prepare myself for the exit date because I knew I would come out with mysteries 
that had been hidden even up to now. I knew he would come out by giving me the mystery of the word. The mystery of the word, not because I studied it, but because I lived it. Because I walked in it. Because the Bible became the living word to me. Because I used it. And it brought me out and brought me through. And now I hear him say, go and set the captive free. And that's why I'm telling you tonight, if you want to see the glory of God hit your life like you ain't never seen it hit your life, you praise the Lord in a hard place. I don't, some of y'all can't holler praise him. I said praise him in a hard place. If you ain't got no food, praise him. If you ain't got no money, praise him. If you in a situation and don't know how you gonna get out, praise him. You have been considered. And say that to three people I've been considered come on say it to three people because it's gonna change your it's gonna change your mindset I've been considered and pastor the Bible said in the book of Job do not complain against what God is doing neither do you enter into the realm of iniquity or else you multiply are you hearing me you multiply the trouble in other words, don't turn the wickedness. Glorify God because you've been considered. I've been considered for what? Watch this, Elder Boyd. I said to the Lord, Dr. Johnson, I've been considered for what? This gonna bless you, Dr. Johnson. This gonna bless you, Pastor. I said, I've been considered for what? He said, it is the only ingredients in the Bible that merits me, God, the right to give the double portion. I can't give you a double portion of my anointed. I can't give you double or nothing until you had a Job experience. The Bible said when he got through, Job came out with double. He came out with more than what he had before. He said, the reason why I couldn't find nobody else to bless you couldn't find nobody else to give you what I wanted you to have. So I had to use you to get you to the other side. Now I've got to give it to you. I've got to bless you. I've got to make the devil take his hand off of your life. I've got to do it. Turn around and tell your neighbor, you don't know my whole testimony, but I'm going to tell you right now, the hell I've been through, God got to do it now. I'm going to give him praise because he got to do it. He got to do it. Guaranteed. It's a guaranteed miracle. It's a guaranteed blessing. It's a guaranteed breakthrough. And he picks it up in the book of Isaiah. And he said, for your shame, you shall have double. If the devil has ever embarrassed anybody in here, you better stop praising God.
I got to go. I got to go. I look around the walls of this building and the glory of the Lord is greater than I last remembered it. You may see some chip paint and a couple of stains on some curtains, but I see the glory of God. I see the house of Bethel. I see the place where angels are ascending and descending. I see the place where I ask my Jesus, don't ever let me take this place for granted. But every time, Father, I walk through the doors, give me one more chance to breathe in the same atmosphere where I know that prayer changes everything. I have to go. When God spoke that word to me, I gotta do what he's telling me to do. I told you this is my Jesus. I don't know what, what God people serve, but I know the one I serve. God spoke to me about sowing, sowing that thousand dollar seed. People in here sowing the 107 seed. You in this building and lighting, you here for the first time, raise your hand. You in here for the first time, you weren't here last night, raise your hand. You need to get the tape for real. Because this is a two-part package of what God is saying. You in this place tonight, and you said, Dr. Barnum, God was talking to me. And he told me that I was supposed to sow this thousand dollars, and I brought it tonight. Raise your hand and come to me, because I need to lay hands on you, because you don't even know what you're about to do. Bring it all the way up on this pulpit, wherever you are. Come, come, wherever you are. If you on this altar, you got to go back to your person. Get it. Go get it. Hurry up because I told you I don't, I don't stand on the floor like that no more. Come up here. Come over here, baby. Come over here. Stand over there. If you in this building, you said Dr. Bonham. Not do it. Give me some envelopes. Give me some envelopes. Give me some envelopes. I want you to hear this. Every person in this building. I don't speak in flesh because I'm scared to. I just got God back on my life for real. I'm scared. Because I know what it feels like for God to be there. Every person that is in this room, because some of you all can put it on your credit card. Come quickly and come up on this pulpit because I got to pray for you. You said God is talking to me to sow this thousand dollars and I know he is. I know he is. I know he is. I know he's talking to me. I know the Lord is talking to me. I don't have the second gifts. So Dr. Bonham, how do you know he's talking to me? Because you got it. That's all, saints. It ain't, no, it ain't no deep prayer thing. We try, to make it, we try to make obedience a deep prayer thing when it ain't. We know God talking to us because you got it. If you ain't got it, he ain't talking to you. That's it, baby. Be obedient. We put Saks Fifth Avenue. We put everything else on our credit card. We might as well give God something. If you're in this building, you can come this way. They're going to help you. Dr. Morgan, wherever you all are, just put your credit card information on that. Let me tell you what God told me. See, the reason why I know 
that this is a time and a season. Hello. For God to do something that he ain't done before, ever. Because he puts us in a place, in a situation that we've never been in before. Elder Boyd said to me last night, I had to do the radio when I got through, so I went upstairs. So I have a radio broadcast that come on at 12 midnight. And I had to do the radio broadcast. And he said, you want the limo to come back and get you? I said, no, just, I can just ride with anybody. You know, God will put your spirit somewhere else where you'd be like, I ain't got to have that. Just get me a car. It's fine. He said, we're sitting in the limo to get you. I said, it ain't got to be no limo. Just send a, just send a clean car. Because the Lord know how to put your spirit somewhere where you just thank the Lord for a ride. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. You just, you just thank him for a ride. I go in ministry, so they say, what can I do for you? Then you can just give me some water. Well, we, we heard you on Gatorade. If you ain't got it, it's fine. He puts your spirit in a place where the spirit of distraction helps you not to be able to recognize the dictionary said what is valuable. And the reason why I know the Lord is setting us all up for something that's supernatural, I can tell you this. Because when I walked in this place tonight, the Lord said, don't take a dime from this building. He said, every dime sowed into the ministry. Every penny. Every penny. So when the Lord is telling you to give tonight, you ain't giving. Because they're going to bless me with some. You're giving because the Holy Ghost said, he getting ready to set us up for something. And you better not miss God. And all over this building, everybody in here that's got a $107 seed, come and get this envelope out of my hand. Move now. You ain't got to wait on your friend. You ain't got to wait on you. You, you ain't got to say, well, I, just, I don't want nobody to see me walking. Come in a hurry. Come in a hurry while the anointing is still on me because when it lifts, I'm going to walk off the floor. I do it all the time everywhere I go. Pastor be like, you ain't through raise. I say, yes, I'm through. Because the Lord said, don't, I don't tarry like that because in four years I learned that God was my source in four years he took care of me in four years he sent people out of the blue to give me money that wasn't even in the church when I didn't have no place to preach because wasn't nobody inviting me the Lord was my source so I've learned that he is my source I don't depend on nothing but him come quick and every person in here that's got a $50 seed or can come as close as you can to something, God said, come and do it now. That's what the Lord said. Either you got $50 or prophetess, I can come as close as I can to $50 because you know what? This is a new day for us. Not a new day for me. It's a new day for us. It's what God is going to do for all of us. I'm sowing. You sowing. We all sowing. We all going to bless our Father's house. Thank you, Jesus. a moment in the atmosphere anybody else feel like I do I feel a moment it just feels special in here right now
soon as you get your offering envelope made out, I want you to come and lay it on the altar. As soon as you get your offering envelope made out, come and lay it on the altar. Prophet Rain is given a thousand dollar seed. Thank you, man of God, for sowing into our Father's house. We being blessed already, because when your mind say yes, it turns on the switch. When your mind tell him yes, it turns on the switch. Then everybody up here get an offering envelope. I don't care if you don't give but 50 cent. This is the leadership part right here. People have to see you sewing if they don't see nobody else sewing. They don't know that it have to be a quarter. Amen? Amen? From all over the room. When I lay my hands on you for this seed, just lay it right here on the altar. I'm telling you, God's going to bless you. He said, This was the Solomon seed. He blessed me with your seed, and I sowed it again. It's the Solomon seed. The Bible said, When Solomon sold 1,000 burnt offerings, the Lord spoke to him and said, what would you have me to do for you? It's to see what the Lord will say to you. What is it that you want me to do? Because if you have a seed like that to bring to God, then what you need from him is not money. What you need from him is what money can't buy. Somebody lift your hands up. Somebody lift your hands up. As I touch you, I touch you in faith. As I touch you, I touch you in faith, in the faith of the word. As I touch you, I touch you in faith, in the faith of the word. Just lay your seat down on that. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you for your obedience, Jesus. Do your word, Father, do your word. Do your word. Do your word, Father. Do your word. Do your word. Do your word. If you're in this building, I don't care if you don't have but 50 cents. You don't want to miss this moment. I don't care if you ain't got but a nickel. You don't want to miss this moment. I promise you, you don't. Come from all over the building. I don't care if you said, Prophetess, I don't have but three pennies. Ball it up real tight and start walking. You don't want to miss this moment. Because the Lord knows what a widow's might is. He knows what a widow's might is. If you're in the overflow room and you said, woman of God, you're talking to me, come from the overflow room, that's it. And bring your seed. I don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room. I want to hide at you. I want to sing right to you. That's one of the songs that's going to be on my new CD. And it just grabbed my spirit so hard when I heard it. Just grabbed my spirit so hard. So give me dove's eyes. <laughs> give me undistracted devotion to only you. Give me Dove's eyes, my God. Give me undistracted. 
unrequited devotion to you, my Lord. I don't want to talk about you, but you're not in You're not in the room. I wanna look right at you. I wanna sing right to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just give him a wave, our friend. This is still worship. So give me the. Thank you for divine release in the building. We thank you because we are sons and daughters chosen for the glory of God to be made manifest in us. We appreciate your clarion call and we're humbled that you've come across our names and we thank you we will never be able to thank you enough for calling us by name for this time and this season. And so we need not bless the house because it's blessed. But we thank you, Lord, that you've called us to be recipients of what's already in the house. We thank you for our father. We thank you for our mother. 